Good morning, this is Pastor Mark. I'm here with Pastor Bob. He's visiting this week from Kalamath Falls at uh, Pastor David Kirby's church. We're glad to have Pastor Bob with us, a uh, former youth pastor with us. Uh, we're glad him and his family could be here this week. Uh, today we want to say thank you to all the veterans, to all the families of veterans that have lost their lives so that we could have freedom. And on this Memorial Day, we just want to say thank you. Today we're going back and talking about the wall. Why a wall? The temple had walls. The tabernacle had walls. Today we're going to talk about our body, the Holy Spirit, the temple, and the walls that we need around it. We look forward to having you with us today. God bless you and have a great day. Remember tonight at 6 o'clock, Miss Faye's uh, End Time Revival. Amen. You want to be here for that. And Miss Bev is taking care of the children tonight from when? Five to seven. Father, we praise you today. We exalt your name on high. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you for giving your son to die on Calvary for us. Father, I pray today that if there be one lost person here, or two or ten, that they would know you as their Lord and Savior. God, if their relationship is not with you intimately, that they would grow that today, Lord. God, I pray that we receive your words, not my words, but let me be a vessel poured out for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I know we're running way, way past, but that's okay. God is good. Amen. Uh, yes. Restaurants will still be open, I promise. They will be open. Um, last week I preached about the wall. And I'm going to do a highlight reel for those that weren't here. I know uh, uh, Bigfoot and Louie were out doing ministry in the field last week, and we're proud of them for all the stuff they do out there. Uh, but let me give you a highlight reel. In Exodus 25 through 40, 25, 35 through 40, when he talks about building the temple of God, he adds the wall as part of the temple. The wall is always part of the temple. That is in the tabernacle in the wilderness. That is in the uh, Nehemiah and Ezra's temple. That is in Solomon's temple. That is everywhere we go, even in the temple that Herod restored, Ezra's temple, they show the wall. If you Fast forward to modern times, here's what you will see. The Jews today fought a war to gain control of the Temple Mount or Jerusalem. In 1948, they did not regain control of the wall. They were supposed to have, but they did not. In 1967, they went back to war because that wall meant that much to them. <coughs> they were going to fight for a piece of the wall because it represented the Temple. Then God tells us that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Let me read this to you. 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 20. 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 20. If you have it, we'll stand for the reading of God's word. My name of God says to read that. Know ye not that your bodies are a member of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he is joined to a harlot in one body? For two, saith he, shall be one, one flesh. But he is joined unto the Lord in one spirit. Flee fornication, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Miss Wendy, we bless the reading of the word.
temple of the Holy Spirit or the third part of the Trinity. And our bodies are that temple. They are part of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, when we see that, we think, wow, that's cool, right? But you know what? We might be missing along the way. And I want to share this with you. And, it, and if it stings a little bit, it has stung me for about a week and a half. Or two weeks now. Uh, Brother Tim Nichols says, I knew you'd be preaching on the wall for a while now. And I don't normally do series, but I want you to catch this. In this particular scripture, he says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit or, or the Holy Ghost. The word temple in the Greek language is nahos. Nahos. The word temple in the Greek language here is nahos. Now watch what this says about this. Nahos, used of the temple at Jerusalem, but only of the sacred edifice or sanctuary itself, <coughs> consisting of the holy place and the holy of holies. In classic Greek, classical Greek, it is used of the sanctuary or cell of the temple where the image of God was placed, which is distinguished from the holy enclosure. Now here's what he said. Every time there's a temple, there's a wall around it to protect the temple. Now he says, we are the temple of God, but only the Holy of Holies. What God is actually speaking to us right here is saying this. You are the temple of God where I will meet you where I will pour out my Shekinah glory on you, where I will manifest my presence through you, but your job is to build a wall around my presence. Now, I want you to hear this this morning, because God has whipped me for a week and a half on this, at least. Just because we're born again children of God does not mean we're protecting the presence of God that is inside of us. Now why would God's presence need protection? It doesn't. God's presence in you need protection. In Nehemiah, here's what he said. The temple is rebuilt. God's house is rebuilt and they're meeting with God. But the wall is torn down so the temple is under attack day and night. Mandy, can I borrow you? I know I, I pick on you all the time. I'm sorry, but uh, you were in my eyesight. Come on. You saw me? I saw you. <laughs> my little coconut. Come on. <laughs> yes. He calls himself a coconut because he says he's Spanish on the outside but white in the middle. <laughs> His nickname, I've just adopted it. So watch this. He's filled with the Spirit of God. But he's done nothing to protect the presence of God. Now the enemy can get in here, 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 here. Now listen, don't make light of this. Because this is what's happening to God's people on a daily basis. They're under attack, but they're not supposed to be under attack. Now watch this. If he builds a wall, start spinning. Now, when the enemy tries to get in, he's going to get hit. When the enemy tries to get in, he's going to get hit. Help me, Holy Ghost, to explain this correctly. You can stop for now. Put your wall down. <laughs> I'm trying to paint a visual for this reason. I want you to see this. God's people are suffering. In the scripture we read, it was because of fornication. It was because of sex outside of marriage. It was because of things they should not be doing in the body. But if we bring this home to all of us, your pastor has been sobered over the last couple of weeks because this is what God is showing me about protecting His Spirit in me. When I allow busyness, and I no longer have time with Him, and I'm at the end of my day, and I haven't said, no, you're not getting in. No, 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 no. Until I build a wall, my presence of God that resides inside of me is under attack because I allowed it to be under attack. Churches are falling apart. 
When you let busyness or bitterness or anything else begin to get inside your bubble, he said you're the holy of holies. He said I want you to build an inner court and an outer court. Now you can let some people in the inner court. Do you know what Jesus said? Jesus is healing the multitude. He's feeding the sick and he stops and says, I gotta go be alone with my father. But the people need you. I gotta go be alone with my father because he understood that there has to be a wall around the presence of God in your life. And we let everything, your pastor lets everything get in that bubble sometimes. And God said, of this, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy of Holies. Only you are allowed in that space. And when you open that door for everyone else to come in, or everything else to come in, or you know what? Well, my church isn't doing what it's supposed to. It's not your church's responsibility for you to have an intimate relationship with God. It's not your responsibility for me to build a bubble. Social media has got to the point where it almost makes me sick because everybody goes on there and everything in their life is about negative, 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 negative. You know why that is? Do you know why people are losing their relationship with God? It's because they will not build a wall and say, no, you're not allowed in this space. This is mine and God's space. This is my family, right? They're the most important thing in my life is my family. They're the most important thing. The most tangible thing I have in my life is supposed to be the presence of God. When I make my family more valuable than the presence, well, they need me, so I got to go. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to worship. Here's what happens. God can't take care of them the way I need him to because I never build a wall around them. My wall is designed to protect the presence of God, the authority of God, the power of God, the anointing of God in our lives. And when we take and we add something to that, we begin to tear down the walls. And all of a sudden, this relationship I have with God, I look back and man, I'm not close to God anymore. Well, there were things that caused that, right? No. Yes. Things cause it. But it's my job to build a safe wall around the presence of God in my life. It's my job to determine that they will not get in. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so many times, as a pastor, as elders, if you're too busy to pray with ministry, then you need to back off on ministry until you find time with God. Deacons, if you're to teachers, if you are so busy in ministry that you don't have an intimate relationship with God, if you, that is not your first priority. Ladies, Miss Susan, if taking care of your stud right here is your number one priority, then you need to find a better priority, and that's your relationship with God. God will take care of him. But he can't when we tear the walls down. If your finances are your number one priority and you literally to a point where that's all that matters, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, and God can't get in, all of a sudden you're taking your holy of holies and you've defiled it. Does this make sense to anybody? Because here's what's happening. The enemy between services when I'm supposed to be alone with God is wanting to blow my phone up with something. He's wanting to tear things down. He's wanting to confuse me so I can't come out here coach and preach like I'm supposed to. So I can't share what I'm supposed to. And it's up to me to build that wall. He gave me a holy of holies. Now it's my job to say nothing else is getting in here. Well, I'm so tired today. Well, there's, you know, we just, this show, we all it. Build a wall. You want your family protected? Stop making them the priority and start making God the priority. Jesus understood.
that he had to have a wall around himself. When they needed him desperately, he had to build a wall around himself. The disciples are in the middle of the storm and he's up in the woods praying. How's your relationship with God today? Because here's things that we see, things that we hear. Well, if it wasn't for, you know, since this happened, I've, I've been kind of, I've been kind of, well, if this isn't, they, well, if that isn't, stuff's going to happen. God gave you a holy of holies, and he said you protect it with everything. I've got to protect my holy of holies as if there's nothing else. You're not getting near it. You're not touching it. No. This is my time with God. No. 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 No, you can't get in here. Because here's what's happening. We're being destroyed by a roaring lion. The enemy is tearing down and he's destroying. And we're seeing our, our churches and we're seeing our, our even our, our things in the church. I told my son this, this ten times this week since he's been back there helping in the youth department. And I said, don't let the enemy get in. Make sure you have time with God. Don't get so busy that you miss your time with God because you look back and all of a sudden your world has come unglued. And it's because you didn't take and build a wall around your relationship. It's the most tangible thing you will ever have in your life. It's an intimate, well, Pastor, you just don't know what I'm going through. But you <coughs> trust me when I tell you this. I fight demons every day of my life just like you do. But when I look back and I see the flaws along the way, and I'd love to relate them to everything that came against me, but I should have never let them in in the first place. I should have never opened the door to let them in. I should have sealed a wall and said, No! This is my place with my God! You ever wondered why you can't worship like you used to? Because the mind and the heart is filled with things of the world. And they've gotten in God's space. And when they get, when you get them out of God's space, all you're going to want to do is worship. Right? You're going to want to get to church. You're going to be so giddy when you get here. Maybe you're one that just stands and weeps. Cool. Maybe you're one that spins and twirls. Maybe you're one that shouts. I don't know, but here's what I know body of Christ is suffering because we're not protecting our most valuable commodity, the Spirit of God. Well, the storm's coming. Well, this is coming. Well, that's coming. Well, if it hadn't been for the divorce. Well, if it hadn't been for me losing my hat. Stop. Stop. And say, nothing's getting in my space with God. You can get in my inner court, maybe. You can get in my outer court or you can stay outside the walls. But this is my space with my God. And when you begin to take that space, last night you were at my house. And as bad as I want, I have enjoyed spending time. I've missed you guys so bad. You don't even know people say, how's it like having 10 people in your house this week? I said, it's been good. Elijah's a little crazy, but he's three. That's going to happen. Right? It's been good. I hope it's been good for you. I've missed you guys. But last night, about 7 o'clock, I've got to get out. I've got to go lock myself somewhere and spend time with my God. If I'm going to stand before you today and give you what God has for you, I have to be with him. And if you're going to survive... And if you think you can do it on your own, come see me when your world falls apart and I'll guide you right back to today. I'll guide you right back here. Because if the world coming against you or sin coming against you or busyness or anything else has stolen your victory, take it back to Calvary. Take it back to where it belongs. And you build a wall around your relationship with God and you go, you know what? All hell may break loose in my life, but not in this space. Uh-uh, because you see, they put a veil up on this space. And nothing's getting in here that's not holy before my God. 
Nothing's getting in this space. You want to change your life? Get you a space with God. Stop worrying about the enemy. Stop worrying about the attack. I know they divorced you. I know they cheat. I know, I know all that stuff's going on. The only place you're going to find what you need is in the presence of Almighty God. <coughs> We'll worry about the rest of it when we step out of here. But I'm going to step out of here empowered. I'm going to step out of here anointed. I'm going to step out of here with some Jesus juice dripping all over me. Things don't stick to me when I got Jesus juice dripping all over me. They just slide right off. You see, church, we're at a place where we allow everything on planet Earth into our space. And Nehemiah said this, the body of Christ is under attack because we don't have a wall. Why a wall? Because I can't live without it. My life falls apart without him. I've tried it both ways, Sterling. I've tried it. It don't work. What I know is this, that if I need comfort, I can find it in him. If I need a miracle, I can find it in him. But if I just need loved on, or if I just know he needs loved on, I better know where to go. And I need to take that phone and throw it in the corner. And I need to take my computer and shut it down. And maybe you need to take your TV. Well, they need me. They need me. They don't need you as bad as you need God. And it's not honestly our fault at times because nobody has ever stood and told us that we're starving because we're waiting on someone else to move on our behalf. And they're not going to. You get a hold of God, they're going to get a hold of you and try to drain you. Jesus understood that. Fed 5,000, run to the woods and be alone with the Father. Heal the sick, run to the woods and be alone with the Father. Do you know even the night before he died what he did? He was in the outer court with all the disciples. He left them and took three to the inner court. He had a wall out there. You stay out there. Then he brought three of them into a comfort zone and said, James, uh, Peter, James, and John, I trust you three to pray with me. You come in here. And then he said, now you stay here. And I'm going to go be alone with the Father. Because what I'm going through, I've got to be with him before I'm going to be able to make it through this. So many Christians they are struggling unnecessarily because sin, sickness does not, is not permitted to stand in the presence of Almighty God. And he said to you, your body, flesh, look it up in the Greek, the flesh carcass that you live in is a temple of the Holy of Holies for me to reside in. And I will meet you there. But I can't meet you where you <coughs> won't meet me. And believe me when I tell you this, I know about struggles. I know about biting my fingernails till they bleed. I know about struggling just like you do. And some of our seasoned saints have got this figured out long before we did. They figured out after 70, 80 years they couldn't do it on their own. They just knew where to go. I'm 52 and I'm just now figuring out that you know what? My ministry is not my relationship with God. My ministry, while I believe it is blessed and good, is not my walk with God. I've been studying for 22 years. I could probably get up here and preach without the anointing, sadly. But I would never want to stand up here and preach without the anointing. I would never want to get up here and preach Mark to you. And I see you, this church, suffering. And your relationship with God is almost as distant as it's been in many years. And I know if I say, if I step to the altar, then people will look down on me.
I'm doing what you called me to do. He said, no, I called you to be with me. And you're neglecting the number one thing so that you can do the other things I've called you to do. And the intimate relationship suffering. And preachers, us, Miss Bev, you and I, we like to jumble it all together. My relationships in tune with God, I can worship to a Betty Crocker cookbook. Take two eggs and mix them in flour.
protect him. You protect me and my relationship with you. You protect my presence in your temple. Don't you let them in. Don't you let anyone else tear down what I'm building in you. Because you are better than that. God created you a temple of the Holy Ghost of God. Nothing else should get in your spot. But when that changes, all of a sudden, everything else will start changing around you. Because your intimate time with God has become your most valuable time. Anybody hear me? Stand with me, if you will. Father, I've tried it one way for service, another way for service. God, I just want your people to hear what you're saying to them. I know. We get so focused on whether the lights are dim or dark, the color of the paint, the carpet's all messed up. We get so focused on the grass. Or who said, she said, we said. something, I'm asking you if your walk with God is not where you think it should be, if it's not where you know it should be, don't wait on your neighbor. Come and pray. I've already been in this altar twice today. Let God restore. If you're not saved, come find me. Let God be God in your life. Altars are open. Pastor Mark, thanking you for joining us today on this Memorial Day weekend, uh, for sharing with us uh, by video. Uh, we are so glad that you did. Uh, as we talk today, uh, just want to remind you and let you know that remember, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you want to protect the presence of God that resides inside of you. We always want to make sure that we do that. Pastor Bob and myself have been talking about this today, and we're excited about what God's going to do next. Thank you for joining us. You have a blessed day.